Hey everyone, in this video series we will be working through a really nice beginner-friendly uh, Azure CTF that is created by a company called Secura. This is the uh, website brokenazure.cloud and if you go to this website you're gonna see that there's a small challenge a few flags that we're gonna submit and there are some hints as well if you feel stuck so this is going to be the first video in the series where i'm going to walk you through the first flag and then in the second part of the video we will be explaining what's happening behind the scenes so we will go into our own subscription log in and try to create a very similar setup so we can understand what's happening uh, under the hood as well so let's get started. If you haven't seen this website before, basically, like I mentioned, it's on brokenazure.cloud. And you can see here that we have some hints. So if you feel stuck, you can click on a hint. And with each challenge, you have a couple hints. So even if the first hint is it very useful or very helpful, that is, and you can go and check the second hint as well. So what we're looking at here is a setup of a company called Super Company. And there's a small scenario, you can read the scenario, but what's important for us uh, for now to start with is the name of the company. It's called Super Company, and this is going to come in handy when we are enumerating. One of the very first things that you do in pretty much any ethical hacking engagement or pen test is enumeration. And uh, in Azure, it's no different. You want to also be enumerating the services that are running on the Azure tenant or the Azure subscription. And one of the things that you want to enumerate is the blob storages. Now, of course, the hint tells us this, but if you imagine that you are not looking at the hints and you're trying to figure out what's going on, you are going to be enumerating different services and throughout the enumeration, you're going to discover that there is a storage account. So how do we enumerate uh, blobs or containers or storage account? There is a PowerShell module that will help us with that. And I will show you a little bit later how you can do this manually as well. But for now, let's look at the PowerShell module called uh, Enumerate Azure Blobs. For that to work, you are going to be assigning a base, which is basically the name that will be prepended to the URL, which is the well-known URL for storage accounts. So here, for example, if I'm assuming the name of the company is Broken Azure, because the name of the challenge is Broken Azure, Broken Azure Cloud, then I can go with enumerate Azure blobs and I assign the base to be Broken Azure. But of course, that returns no results. There is no account or storage account that is called Broken Azure. So let's try something else. We know that the name of the company that we're targeting is called Super Company. So we're gonna use that as a base instead of broken Azure. And we will try that again. And with that, you can see that we've actually found a storage account, super company storage dot blob dot core dot windows dot net. So blob core windows net is the URL that is standard for storage account. And whatever the name of the storage account that you've created is going to be before this URL. So in our case, it's super company storage. So great, this is a very good start. We now know that there is a storage account being used. And one of the things that you will be hearing about and we've heard about quite consistently when it comes to cloud breaches is storage accounts that are not very well protected, that allow anonymous access, or in other words, allow public access. Anybody can access these containers and see what's on them what kind of blobs are stored in these containers. So as a side note, if you are completely new to Azure, the structure or the hierarchy is this. You have a storage account. This is basically where you are going to be storing stuff. This stuff is going to be stored in imagined folders. And these folders are called containers. Inside these folders, you are going to be putting your files image files, video files, text files, whatever it is that you want to be storing. These files are called blobs. So files are blobs, folders are containers, and all of this is sitting in something that is called a storage account. What we want to do now is we want to try and see if we can connect anonymously to this storage account. Is it protected or not? And there's a couple of ways of doing that. The graphical, more visually appealing way for the sake of this video is the Azure Storage Explorer. This is a utility that you can download from Microsoft. So I'm gonna launch this now. 
and I'm going to connect to a storage account. So here I'm going to select the blob container and I'm going to try anonymous access. Obviously, I don't have a username and a password. I don't have a direct URL that will allow me access to a specific file. So I'm gonna have to try my luck and see if anonymous access is allowed. So I'm going to select anonymous access and I'm going to paste the URL. Now, you'll notice here that it is not accepting the URL. It is asking me to provide a path to the source. What is it that I'm trying to access? What we have right now is the URL for the storage account. But like I said, in the storage account, we have the folders that are called containers. So this is at least something I need to be providing. So I have to provide the name of the folder over here, whatever that might be. Here I'm putting something, you can see that it's accepting the URL, but obviously that's not gonna work because there is no container called something in this subscription. So I need to figure this out before I connect. So let's cancel this and try something different. I'm gonna go back to the website and you can do this multiple ways as long as you can find a way to sort of monitor the network traffic while you're loading the page. Uh, for me, the easiest way is to use the inspect element option in your browser. And we can go to the network tab over here. That will allow us to see what kind of requests and responses are being passed to the website. You can use a proxy like Burp, you can use Wireshark, whatever it is that you're comfortable with. And for me, this doesn't require any setup, so to me this is the easiest thing. I'm going to reload the page and after a bit of investigation and looking around, we can see that there is a logo.png file that is being called from somewhere. This is a common use for storage accounts. So if you are hosting a website and this website has media on it, videos, images, PDF files, whatever it might be, you want this to be loaded from somewhere, right? So that somewhere in our case is the storage account. And you can see here the details of the storage account. You can also see the name of the container, which is storage container. So that's great. That gives us now another piece of information that comes in very handy. Let's go back to our storage explorer and let's now try to connect to it. Again, I'm gonna open blob container, I'm going to select anonymous and I'm going to paste the URL. I am going to remove the last bit, which is the file name, and I'm just going to leave the container name because I want to connect to the container, the folder, so to speak, to try and list the content of that folder. And I'm just gonna change the display name. This is basically something you could put whatever you want here. It's just something that will help you know which content or which storage account this is. So I'm gonna click on next, and hopefully that is going to help me connect or allow me to connect to the storage account. Let's click on connect, give it a minute. Brilliant, now we can see that we have been able to successfully connect to the container. So I'm able to anonymously, without using any authentication, I'm able to connect to the container and list the files on this container. So you can see here the logo that is being used in the website and you can see there are a couple other files that we are going to be also inspecting. So you can see the flag over here and now it's just a matter of going back and submitting the flag. Now, before we do that, let me show you what that looks like if you are doing it using the browser. You can also enumerate these containers using the browser. And what you're gonna be doing is you're going to be pasting the URL for the storage account in your browser. And again, I'm going to be removing the last bit over here and I'm going to use the list argument. So over here, I'm basically sending a request saying I want to list the content of that container. You can see the name of the container here highlighted in orange and you can see the different names of the files or the blobs that are stored in this container. And then it's just a matter of basically going directly to the source using these URLs that you can see. So if I take this any of these URLs and I copy them in the browser, I'm going to be able to download these files. And that's what we're gonna be doing for the next video. But for now, this is going to be our flag. We're gonna take this, we're gonna submit it, and then we are going to move to the next challenge. So that is the first bit of this video where we explain how we got the flag. And the second part of this video, 
I will show you how you can set up something similar. So what is happening in the background, what's happening under the hood, how you can set up a storage account, container that allows anonymous access, upload some files. So we're going to recreate this environment so you can have hopefully a better understanding of what's happening behind the scenes. That's it for now, and I will see you soon in the next video.